Hello everyone, I'm your host, Joseph J. McAllister. Tonight, I'm going to take you down, down, down the dark rabbit hole of morning photography. We're right along with Josiah Johnson Haas of Southworth and Haas Photographic Company to photograph the newly deceased. Go ahead and put the horses in the stable, dim the lanterns, stoke the fire, and pour a cup of hot apple cider, for it's time to take a delightful and terrifying journey into photography's dark history. Josiah Johnson Haas, 1808 through 1901. How to take a morning portrait, 1873. When I began to take pictures 20 or 30 years ago, I had to make pictures of the dead. We had to go out more often than we do now, and this is a matter not easily managed. But if you work carefully over the various difficulties, you will learn very soon how to take pictures of dead bodies, arranging them as you please. When you have done that, the way is clear and your task easy. The way I did it was just to have them dressed and laid on the sofa. Just lay them down as if they were in a sleep. That was my first effort. It was a little boy a dozen years old. It took a great while to get them to let me do it. Still, they did let me do it. I will say at this point, because it is a very important one, that you may do just as you please so far as handling and bending of the corpses is concerned. You can bend them until the joints are palpable and make them assume a natural and easy position. If a person has died, and friends are afraid a liquid will be ejected from the mouth. You can turn them over just as if they were under the operation of an emetic. You can do that in less than one single minute and every single thing will pass out. And you can wipe out the mouth and wash off the face and handle them just as if they were well persons. Arrange them into position or bend them into this position. Then place the camera and take your pictures just as they would in life as if standing up before you. You don't go down to the foot of the sofa and shoot up this way. Go up on the side of the head and take the picture so that the part of the picture that comes off from you will come off above the horizontal line. So it would be as if a natural position, as if standing or sitting before you. There is another thing which will be useful to you carrying out your operation, and that is a French style mirror about four foot long and not very wide. That will suit some cameras arranging the mirror so the reflection of the party will be thrown upon it as an easy, graceful, natural way and then take your pictures from the mirror without much trouble. I make these remarks because I think they may be very valuable to somebody. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about morning photography and of course uh, to people nowadays it seems very morbid and creepy and unnecessary to take pictures of people after they're dead. We we have all these pictures of them in life. That's the problem back then. Photography wasn't as widespread and it was very expensive. And in life, people didn't have the money to get their photos taken. And when somebody died unexpectedly, possibly at a young age or died at all, and nobody ever expects anyone to die, um, that might be the only opportunity you have to get a likeness and it would be not just a morning photo but a memorial photo to remember them and what they look like and who they were to tell your grandkids this is a picture of your relative from way back when um, so it was just a different situation and different times another goal of morning photography of course was to make people look uh, lifelike you you didn't want them to look like a corpse like Oh, here's a picture of a dead person. A lot of times these photographers resorted to some pretty weird tactics to create this lifelike appearance. Um, I think the 
the blissful sleep kind of look with the eyes closed uh, probably grew tired very quickly. So they, they actually used to draw eyeballs onto the eyelids or um, sometimes they'd take the photo and then later an artist would because like so many photos back then were touched up by an artist you didn't just take one you also the artist was right there to touch it up as well add color because they were black and whites and things like that. So sometimes the artist as well would try to add in eyes to make the eyes appear that they're open and more natural like lifelike. And unfortunately like a lot of times this just made the photo look even creepier because it, it didn't look right. Uh, a lot of times uh, you see in morning photography there will be people, the family members gathered around as if it's a, a family portrait. Sometimes it'll be very deliberate that they the person is deceased it could be a photo in the coffin or at the wake or uh, they're in the coffin with flowers everywhere very deliberately this is a photo of them at death or sometimes like laying on a sofa or a bed as if they were alive another interesting type of morning photography is where where people actually they hold a photo of someone else and people will say well why are they holding that photo and it's because the person in the photo is someone that's dead and that's sort of their way of like preserving the likeness and and uh, making a morning portrait as well. Now people are always arguing over whether a morning photograph picture is actually a real morning photograph picture which makes it more valuable uh, or just a weird looking Victorian photo. Maybe somebody sleeping or maybe they just look weird or maybe uh, the artist touched the photo up and made them look strange by retouching the eyes and maybe they weren't dead at all. So people argue about that a lot. And a lot of that is just open it to interpretation at this point because a hundred years later there's really nobody to confirm it. And then uh, there's rigor mortis and rigor mortis usually sets in 8 to 12 hours after death and lasts for another 18 hours and there's actually like a lot of people say different times so you can't really like completely pinpoint that down. Some people say it happens after one hour and lasts like for eight days and who knows but it lasts for a certain amount of time. Generally what you're going to see in a real morning photograph is somebody laying down or they're with a family member and their head is rested on the person's shoulder with the eyes closed or they may appear to be sleeping uh, they may actually be in a coffin or they might be uh, reclined on a couch uh, you know as if they're relaxing or sometimes even sitting in a chair now there's a thing in uh, photography called a head brace stand and it's basically there's a heavy base tripod and then uh, it comes up in a pool there's sort of a u-shape and you kind of bring it in and touch it to the back temples of the person who's uh, standing in the photo people mistake these photographs all the time uh, when they see these which are in a lot a lot a lot of photographs they mistake them sometimes for morning photographs which they're not truly morning photographs if somebody is standing up uh, with a head brace stand because the head brace stand is very flimsy and it's not going to support a 180 pound deceased person or if they have rigor mortis or if they're limp and they are like they have dead weight and they're just falling down on the ground because this thing is not sturdy at all it's just enough to barely touch the temples of your head and just give you a guide to stay still during a long like 30 second or minute long uh, wet plate colloidian exposure. I'm your host Joseph J. McAllister. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember, try to enjoy the light.